Unfortunately, Jarmo Kekalainen has been relieved of his duties as Blue Jackets general manager, long time at the helm, uh, the architect of a lot of good in that organization, but things have not been good lately for Columbus, and they decided to make a change. Here is Jackets president, John Davidson, on the news. The change is made. This is a process that we're trying to go through to become a much better hockey club, to become a consistent hockey club, so nobody let their guard down. We're going to go through everything from A to Z. And for me right now to say, yeah, I'm going to change this and that and this and that, I don't think it's fair for me to, to say that right now, but it's certainly up to me to try to evaluate that. Put trust in me, put trust in all of us, and at the end of the day, I think what Boone said is perfect. It kind of falls on us a little bit. You know, I think if you're a winning team consistently, if you're a playoff team consistently, things like this don't happen, and we're not where we want to be, and you know, it falls on us, but um, obviously he's meant a whole lot to me, and um, just want to thank him. You know, any winning teams are, you know, that have that culture have been through um, tough times, and you know, right now we're we're in that process, and you know, some days it, we're not where we need to be at, and um, it's finding the energy to, you know, dig deep in those in those cir circumstances, and um, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to help us uh, grow as a group. Okay, tough news again if you are, uh, you know, Kekalainen, and certainly just even in hockey, right? Like, we never root for people to lose their jobs. And so I always do say that it's bad news or tough news when somebody gets fired because it, it's unfortunate. But um, they say a change had to be made, and that, that's what they're going with. Uh, we see what's your take on the situation. Well, a tough situation all around uh, for the great fans here in Columbus and for their team. Uh, you know, I hope we have a, a bit of time to kind of dive into this because dive. there's a lot of things here. Number one, for Yarmo, who's really hardworking, uh, I'll definitely give him that. He's he's one of those people that is always in the rink. Uh, anybody I speak to in junior, anybody I speak to in college, USHL, minors, over in Europe, he's in rinks all the time. So he's not one of that's in one of those executive positions that just likes the benefits of the golf course membership. Mm -hmm. He's actually out there beating the bushes looking for players. They've done a nice job in terms of drafting. They have a lot of good pieces there. Make yeah, no great, mistake about it. Great yeah. trades they made. Some, right? Tenure. So, but the challenge for Columbus in the bigger context for me is this. It's more of a smaller to mid-market, not dissimilar to, let's say, a Raleigh. Sure. Yeah. And having played in Carolina, the difference is a lot of players love living there. A lot of players really enjoyed playing there once they get to find out what it is. But they've had some sustainable success. Right. Which also helps that. Whereas in Columbus, I think it's a, a really good spot as well. And Great players, look, yeah, guys. Sneaky road city. For sure. But the challenge is they haven't had the sustainable success. Yeah. And hockey's huge in Ohio in general, starting at the youth hockey level. Youth hockey, high school, college, minor pro, and of course the Jackets. Hockey's big in Ohio, but they just haven't gotten the traction of success. And that's a big part of the decision today. Yeah, and you talked about it a bit today. Just the long leash that he had and, and Yarmo again credit to him they you know they made the playoffs five times mm -hmm. you know not a ton of success in there but they had he brought in some great players made some great trades but 11 years you need a little bit more to show for it mm -hmm. and I feel like the Babcock bringing in Babcock at the end I think there needed to be more due diligence they they said they did they said they kind of dotted all the T's, crossed all the I's, and unfortunately it didn't work out. He was only there for 78 days. And But what do you do moving on now? I think uh, John Davidson came out, he said they want a fresh perspective going to the trade deadline. So the new guy coming in is going to maybe get his footprint on the trade deadline, mm -hmm. kind of get a new identity for this team, because I think that's what they're missing is an identity. Yes. Columbus Blue Jackets identity, Columbus Blue Jackets hockey, because you talk about the city. The city's great, the fans are there. That cannon's always there when they score. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fans, when they, when you're winning, they're there, and they're coming. So it's like give them give them something to root for. They got some pieces, you know. They got Fantilli now. They got Veronkov. They got the young guys. Marchenko. Ken Johnson, Marchenko. They got a lot of guys. If you look down in that talent pool. Jet Greaves, get him in the net. Yeah. Get him in the net. Please so, continue. So we'll see. You're a so, check. So we'll see. But you're a check's kind of, and he was unhappy. He was looking to. As he should have been. He was up. He was down. He hasn't been really getting a ton of ice time, but, you know, at least Pascal Vincent has kind of said you're going to earn your minutes. Mm -hmm. But 
we'll see what the new GM does and, and what direction he wants to go into. What, what is the direction they need to go in? Because this is a, a franchise that, again, like they've struggled not only to make the playoffs, yeah. but have any sustained playoff success. So what needs to happen? You talk about culture or pieces. Yes. Where does it culture start? Culture needs to get yeah, like, remade. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I'm not going to give out all my nuggets for free here on TV. <laughs> I'll but pay I would, you. But, <laughs> right? but I would say this. I, I love your point about identity because I feel like when they had Ken, Ken Hitchcock, they had a defined identity. Yes. And I remember playing against them when Steve Mason just came up and he was outstanding in the net and they had a way in which they played under Hitch. When Torts, my man, came in there, Torts, Bradshaw, the whole crew, they did an amazing job there too. They had an identity in how they played, how they competed, what their concepts were. Right now, they're looking for an identity, number one. So what are those things going to be? Are we? Do you want to become a hard-nosed team? Do you want to be a four-checking team? Are we a go-go-go skilled team? The way the they're, Devils play. Well, their like, their youth kind of lends itself to skill, and I think they need to kind of start putting some pieces around that. They obviously need to shore up their defense. That, that's a big one for them. Mm -hmm. they have a lot of guys. I know Wierenski's, you know, great defenseman. He's been got hit with the injury bug a little bit, and hopefully they can pick it up a little bit. But as you can see, none of this is up to par with what you want. Where's your identity? Your identity can't be being last and everything. So they need to kind of find something and go for it. If if you're last in goals against, we'll try to be first in goals for. You know, I, I looked to like a Montreal a little bit with mm -hmm. St. Louis. We talked about him yesterday. Mm -hmm. And Slavkovsky, they've established that identity that they might lose 6-5, but they're going to be exciting. They're going to score goals. Their youth is going to play, and their youth is going to have to be offense-minded first and make plays. Right now, maybe that's the way they want to start leaning is, is that blueprint and and keep building because they have the, the youth is there. Those They got some skilled guys. Yeah, they do. You got Cole Sillinger, you got these guys. It, they got some guys coming up, and they're going to get another pick this year. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's kind of time. So I think it's a good it's good timing. We were talking about is it the right timing right now to get him out? I think the writing was on the wall for him, and they wanted to kind of wait a little bit and now see if the team actually performed after all the, all the cloudiness with the Babcock firing that maybe the team would rally around and kind of play. But now that they're out of it, now you want a guy to come in, get a fresh perspective, like John Davidson said, and you know, no discredit to Jarmo Kekalainen. To your point, he works hard. He had Columbus mm -hmm. in, in mind, in his heart. He wanted them to win, try to get them to win. But now it's time for a fresh face, fresh perspective. Yeah, and you got to be able to blend at this point going forward for Columbus, right? Like, you know, I'm kind of partial to Columbus, and I met my wife there. There's a lot of good things going on in that. I love that. You met your wife area. in Columbus. I love that. We Did not Columbus. know that. Love that. So for a lot of you Jackets fans, in case you don't know, we Aww. met in Columbus. But, Char Bar. And it is the day after Valentine's Day. At Char Bar <laughs> or what? Nope. It's actually twice, but in the airport. So, wow. So uh, yeah, that's that your is, Doctor Love segment from yesterday. That is JD You're trying to love. sneak it in. But, Everybody's but, John Davidson's doing the JD Love with the buttons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lost exactly. a couple buttons on his way. You inspired right? so much yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah, but but this is but cultures. this this is the big thing for me with Columbus though. There are a lot of players that have retired that live there that like it. Mm -hmm. There are yeah. players that are playing there that like it. And to their credit. They had the first of its kind in combining your game rink with your practice rink. Yes. And for a lot of you that don't know, the great Lou Lamorello, when we were here with the Devils, that's a big part of why the Prudential Center is here now, because it was based on the blueprint of what Columbus has. Mm. And with why the is practice that rink People that and the might game not rink. Know. Comfortability so, for players. Totally. Nothing worse than driving that's right. 40 minutes to the practice that's rink, right. 40 minutes to the game rink. Yeah. It's you have that continuity. Everything makes sense. It helps everything for treatment. It's more it's unity in the dressing room. Easy, it's easy better for, for the team trainers. camaraderie, better for the trainers. trainers who work so hard. Correct. So all of right. that makes sense. But as and again, and in general, it's a great area. But the challenge now is now you need to not only tell your story of why it's a great area, but you need to mirror that with the foundations in place to have success on the ice and put those two things together. And then you're cooking with gas. That's exactly what they've done in Raleigh. Yeah. I lived it firsthand. It's the same thing, but when you have teams that go to the cup final, you have teams that are in the playoffs every year, then you won a Stanley Cup. Now you're another good team again in the East again if you're the Carolina Hurricanes under my man Rod Brindamore. There's continuity that's there, yeah. and it's because they have the foundation in place, and that's where Columbus is now. They need to establish that foundation. It's going to make it super interesting and like a team to watch come trade deadline Yeah. because you'll know exactly what direction they're going in. Yes. Because they're obviously True. sellers. True. Merzlikens, potentially you want Jet in the net. Jet on the, the back end, who do you bring right. in on the back end? You know, your check was saying that he potentially wanted to change the scenery already. Mm -hmm. I think you should stick there, stick it out. You're a young kid. You'll get some ice time. But 
where do they go? It's like they have a like ton of pieces. So now it's going to be where do they solidify their identity? Their identity. Player so retention. Yeah. You got to retain players, you not not in those terms of those trades, but in general. No, but yeah. Well, Boone Jenner, do you keep him? Yeah. Do you keep That's him as really the guy? That's a really interesting trade. Chip he's a, I, there's so many a lot teams of guys, a lot him. of teams would love him, but he's so valuable to them. And you can't just put this on Adam Fantilli right now, like That's to the be the leader That's, of the team. Well, the he like does want to be there, though. That's what I love about him. Is you yeah. don't hear a lot of guys saying like, "I want to be in Columbus." I want you know college connections, this that. But he said, "I want them to draft me. I hope I get I drop to third well, overall, the, so I can." But go this there. is my thing: the best recruitment tool, the best recruitment tool. Our players and staff. That's the best recruitment yeah. tool. Yeah. You know what? We're down there in the in the in the you know the dressing room area yeah. at Scotia Bank Arena. I saw, I heard those guys talking. I lived it. We lived it. You know how the hey man, this is a good setup. Hey, we got a, a good setup yeah, here. Hey, we got hey, they treat us first class here. Hey, we've got this going on. Hey, they take care of the wives and families over here. Hey, they do good. Alumni That's your best recruit, a hundred percent. Alumni is huge. There's, That's your best teams recruiting that miss tool on that, and the teams that have started to bring guys back. A perfect example is the the Kings and the Blues. Their their alumni is always around. Their yep. scouts. Their yeah. Rob Blake brought them in. Yeah. And it just makes it for it, it makes it for more enticing to come as a guy. You're, yeah. Because you're getting first hand knowledge from a guy who's yeah. played. Yeah. That's right.